of God, creator, sustainer and redeemer. Amen. Good morning and welcome to this, our online service from St George's Church in the benefice of South Newbury. And our theme today is, Who do you say that I am? So in a moment of silence, let us bring ourselves before God and to think about our week. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Spirit of God hovered over the water. And brought life to all creation. Come, Holy Spirit. And renew the face of the earth. We say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's whole creation groans, the land produces thorns and thistle, and longs to be set free. Our sin affects all around us. Let us confess our brokenness in penitence and in faith. Creator God, we confess that we have not honoured and followed you. We have broken our relationships with one another, abused your fragile creation, wounded your love, and marred your holy image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. Father, forgive us. Lead us from apathy to love. Strengthen us as stewards of your precious people and of your glorious creation. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We respond to God's compassion and welcome. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. And our special prayer this morning with, as we join the worldwide Anglican Church. Lord God, defend your church from false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth, that we may e enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have our first reading. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, 
and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. Then he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this all quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word be our rule, in it may we rejoice. Your glory be our aim, your holy will our choice. Amen. Let us think, uh, first of all, how we get to know others. There's a standard ritual, isn't there, which starts with, what is your name? Where do you live? What do you do for a living? Do you have any family? And a stranger then starts to turn into an acquaintance, and you get a, a sense of who they are. But if the relationship is to develop, further insights are required. Things like, what are the values that shape their behaviors and their decisions? What are their opinions and attitudes towards others? What is their sense of direction and motivation? Are they trustworthy? Do they operate with integrity? And do they treat others with respect and dignity? Gradually, the acquaintance turns into a friendship and perhaps, for many, a lifelong companion. But there are limitations as to how much we can truly know about anyone, even our closest companions, unless it is revealed to us. In the first chapter of John's Gospel, the religious authorities approached John the Baptist with the question, 
Who are you? Are you the Messiah? Elijah, perhaps? Or are you a prophet? Who are you? What do you have to say for yourself? It's a question inquiring deep into the heart of the essence of a person. It's like an exocet missile targeting the, targeting the deep within the core of the human existence. It's an inquiry for self-revelation, for an opening up and sharing the depths of our being. But in our gospel passage, Jesus is not challenged by anyone, but he invites the inquiry. In my view, not out of casual interest, but as a prelude to further self-revelation about his true identity, an opening up and sharing of the depths of his being. Who do you say that I am? Peter responds, you are the Messiah. And here we might clap our hands and at least be thankful the disciple has actually got it right for once. But then Jesus says something which we don't expect. He sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Why is that? Why would he say that? And perhaps the subsequent conversation that we read reveals one reason. You see, Peter may have the right title, but he's got the wrong understanding. What Peter learns is that grasping the identity of Jesus is not simply about getting the title right. Naming does not define Then he began to teach them that he must undergo suffering, rejection, and be killed only to rise again. Peter objects and is rebuked because he misunderstands what is being said. Jesus is revealing who he is. He's not just revealing what will happen but revealing the depths of his being, the character and essence of a God whose nature is always to have mercy, whose nature and very being is all about giving his all for the sake of others. I recall that passage in Philippians 2. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not claim regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born of human likeness, and being born found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. There is no duality in this Philippians passage. There is no leaving his divinity behind, no setting aside his divinity, but a wholehearted throwing in of his divinity to embrace the cross. This is not just what I do, says Jesus. This is who I am. The cross is not an external event imposed from outside of his being, but an internal necessity intrinsic to his being. The cross is the outworking of who he is, a God who loves, reconciles, and saves. There is a dynamic going on here which spans the ages. In our relationship with Jesus, we make our own judgment as to who Jesus is. There are many titles we can use. Messiah, Savior, Son of God, Friend, Christ. 
to name a few. The question posed to us is not whether we confess Jesus as Messiah. That's easy part. We know what the title is. The question becomes, how much do we understand about what it means for us? What does it tell us about who Jesus is? Is it simply that which we are prepared to hear? Or does it challenge us, form and shape us in our lives? Set your mind on divine things. The secret is not to look at this issue through the lens of human knowledge and unreasoning, but to deepen our relationship with Christ to the point where that understanding of who he is comes through. To open ourselves to the point where we allow that divine perspective on who Christ truly is and who we truly are to break through into our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the knowledge of God's love for us, let us pray for the church and the world. We pray for all clergy serving in deprived or violent areas of the world, all who are in personal danger for teaching the faith. May they be reassured and their service blessed by the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who serve in positions of authority in this country and throughout the world, for all debates and international talks. May the power of reason you have given us lead us towards your truth and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for those who serve, we serve each day, and those who serve us, for relationships we find difficult, for situations which tend to make us irritable. Increase our generosity of spirit and our delight in serving others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the resentful and all who suffer injustice or neglect, for all in need from natural disasters, war, famine or disease. May your love reach them through our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in faith, and that they may know the joy of heaven forever. We rejoice in all the goodness <coughs> and generosity your love has inspired in so many people, for the way you encourage and guide us. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We, we believe, believe in God the Father, Father from, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
and now for the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and to complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. All my hope on God is founded. He does still my trust be in you. Me through change and chance he guideth on me. temple fall to dust, but God's power by heart is my temple and my tongue. God's great goodness endureth, deep his wisdom passing thought, and a light and life attend him, beauty springeth out of naught. Evermore from his store newborn worlds rise and adore. Still from earth to God eternal, Sacrifice of praise be done High above all praises Praising for the gift of Christ his Son Christ doth call one and all Ye who follow shall not fall As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may the whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the image of the unseen God, the firstborn of all creation. He created all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible, thrones, dominions, sovereignties, powers. All things were created through him and for him, Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. He is the radiant light of your glory. He holds all creation together by his word of power. Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. He is the first to be born from the dead. All perfection is found in him. And all things were reconciled through him and for him. Everything in heaven 
and everything on earth when he made peace by his death on the cross, Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. The church is his body. He is its head. He takes his place in heaven at your right hand, where we worship you with all of your creation, saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us and for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for money for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you this bread and this cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather into your loving arms and bring us the Blessed Virgin Mary, St George, St John and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fail, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In giving thanks to God, we say, Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God, our God, King, King of the universe, universe creator of light and giver of life. To you be glory and praise forever. In Jesus your light has shone out, and you have given your Holy Spirit as a mighty stream of life-giving water to refresh and renew the face of the earth. Let your light shine in us, that we may become beacons of justice and bearers of hope. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Just uh, not many notices this week, uh, just to say that... Uh, all details of our uh, services and events are contained uh, within our newsletter, which comes out every Friday, and details of our services can be found on our website. So let us offer ourselves in this forthcoming week and to go with God's blessing. May God, who clothes the lilies and fields, the birds of the sky, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, 
who multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine. Lead us, feed us, multiply us, and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator, now and through all eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I call heaven and earth to witness today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Thank you.